It's either seven or is it eight years that you've been president of, of the UCI now. What have been the major changes which have been implemented by yourself and by the rest of the organisation during that time? I've been president now since 2005. Um, almost coming up to eight years next September. I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a four-year term and the second four-year term finishes up next September. I think the, the major changes are that the, the sport is globalised. I mean, when I became president, I laid out two, two main objectives. And one was the globalisation of the sport. And as I said, my experience in Malaysia, Philippines, and, and places like that, um, from being there and seeing athletes from those countries, I knew if they were given opportunities to ride good races, we could find very good professionals there. Um, so global, globalizing the sport was one of, one of the objectives, and the other was in the fight against doping and to try to, try to change the culture of what was doping in the sport into anti-doping. In relation to the first one, globalizing, I think the sport has and is still in the process of globalizing. Um, I've introduced the World Tour, UCI World Tours come in. We introduced two races in Canada, one race in Beijing onto the World Tour. Um, and then we've also got the five continental calendars. And when I look at in 2005, for instance, in Africa, there would have been maybe four to five races, UCI international races in Africa, on the African continent. If you look today, there's 25 or 30. And I would predict that uh, within a couple of years' time, I'm going to say a couple, six or seven years' time, um, there will be an African rider, probably a black African rider, on a podium um, of a Grand Tour. Because the talent is there, and we've, we see that in, in riders that are coming from places like Eritrea, Ethiopia. Once they're given the opportunities, it can happen. Also, Asia has developed rapidly and is growing, growing very, very fast. And there's, there's a whole professional scene with continental teams, pro-continental teams, and new events, very well-organized events in Asia. So the globalization has, has gone very well. Um, and it's still going, still a lot to be done there. Um, the other was anti-doping, and I firmly believed in the biological passport. I firmly believed in what it could achieve for us, what it could do for us, and I was very instrumental in introducing the biological passport into cycling. Now, we see, even in recent weeks, many other international federations are coming under pressure and looking at and, and communicating with the, with the UCI as to how they can do, introduce it into their sports. So I think, from the point of view of that, the armory that is around today in the fight against doping is much stronger than the armory that was there 10, 15 years ago. You talk about the globalisation of cycling helping the sport as a whole, the organisers, the teams become more professional. One of the topics at the moment is the fact that teams are so reliant on their sponsors in terms of the backing and if, if their main sponsor pulls out it's very likely that teams go into fold. There's no income from, from TV rights or from ticket sales. Again, is that something that you are going to address or is that something that the teams and the organisers need to address? No, 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 it's, it's a responsibility. It's a matter for the UCI as well. And in that sense, I think the, what we've announced recently and just before Christmas um, the stakeholder consultation will take a lot of that into account because we've had a very positive response to the stakeholder consultation. All of the stakeholders in, in the UCI, teams, riders, um, organizers, fans even, um, national federations have all been asked to get involved in the stakeholder consultation. It's an online, an online uh, uh, thing. So it's, it's, it's currently going on as we speak. And a lot of those factors will be taken into account there. And I think that we, we, will, we will use a lot of the knowledge that we get from that stakeholders' consultation to try to drive the, 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 the sport in the way forward, the way people think it should be driven forward. But sustainability of teams is a thing which will come in, I've no doubt, as a, as a discussion group. <coughs> in, when, when we get down to working groups, discussing all of the ideas that come forward. And we'll see uh, you know, what ideas come forward in terms of sustainability. At the moment, a lot of teams are, are you know, the, the, the sponsors come and go. So we need, we need more security responses, and indeed we need a, a more global world tour. And with a global world tour, that does mean new events in new places. Um, but that doesn't say, and, and, and a lot of people get afraid when, I, when, I, when they hear me mention, or the UCI mention something like that. They say, well, what about all the historic races and the, 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 you know, the tradition of our sport? We cannot afford to, nor we have no intention of neglecting that history, neglecting the, the, the heritage of cycling. But what we want to do is add new events to that heritage that can benefit the sport and benefit the development of the sport and benefit the professionalization of the sport and 
finish up with a much better um, uh, television product than we have at the moment.